Do you have a national park at your doorstep? Maybe you do, but millions of us in urban and suburban areas don't. So how can we still appreciate native environment without having to go to a national park? That's what we'll explore today. Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. We are on a mission to make Australian educational, care and other organizations sustainable, frugal and improve their footprint. And in this video, we will Visit a bush care site in Sydney's in the West. Meet bush care officer Adam who runs the program. Share what are, the, what are some of the natives that thrive in this area and a number of weeds. And meet a few volunteers and share what a typical bush care half day looks like. Alright, but you might be asking, why does bush care in our cities matter? Isn't it all supposed to be for out there? And I'm here with Adam. Adam is the Senior Ecology Volunteers and Projects Officer with the Council. And I met Adam about three and a half years, years ago when I joined in. So, Adam, what is the role of bush care sites like this one in our cities? A bush care sites in like this in the cities are really important, Jan, because we're re recreating the natural, uh, the natural heritage that was here before, before European settlement. We're providing um, habitat for native fauna and flora. So in a way we're recreating what was here. Can you share with us what was the original habitat at this site? What happened to that habitat? And what are we striving to restore? Yeah, I can, Jan. Down, down here we're right on the edges of the Hawthorne Canal, like right on the banks of the Hawthorne Canal. Uh, this area here would have been a floodplain forest. So dominated by species like Casuarina glauca, uh, would have been quite damp underfoot, quite swampy. The swamp would have stretched out to what is now the whole limits of uh, Richard Murden Reserve. Um, then about the turn of the century they decided that they would, instead of uh, having the swampy area, they would create a canal which in effect drowned, drained the landscape around the canal. So where you, swamp plants were thriving and doing quite well, they, they brought in fill soil and they built up the soil bank and that meant that the soil, the water drained down into the canal and that kind of changed the natural environment quite significantly. Um, as a result, when um, community bush care first started here, the community started planting plants from Sydney sandstone species. Um, Sydney sandstone species did quite well in the elevated areas because they didn't have the wet feet as they say which is when the, the groundwater's um, saturating the root area and that sort of thing. Um, but what we're finding now is that it's actually more appropriate to recreate that flood plane forest community. So that means that we're planting more plants like um, uh, sorry, um, eucalyptus robusta yes, and the plants that do quite well in a swampy kind of environment, uh, melaleucas and things like that. Um, and that provides a lot of habitat for some of the, the birds and plant, the birds and animals that um, interact with the waterway and also live along the riparian zones and salt marsh areas and that sort of thing. What are the main challenges in the restoration process? Uh, yeah, but there, it is quite a challenging site, Jan. I mean, this, this site here is probably one of the most urban bush care sites in Australia. We're very close to the centre of Sydney. It's only a few k's away. Um, it's a very highly urbanised area. You get a lot of um, pedestrian traffic. The site is long and narrow, which is a very difficult shape for a bush care site to be. But in this kind of context, you, you take the natural areas that you can get um, for recreating this stuff. When you have a long, narrow bush care site, it means that you have a lot of edge and not much area in the centre, which is the way that weeds spread into the edges of the bush care site. You have people walking through the site quite often, so you have people trampling the site and littering in the site, and that, that has another effect which is quite negative on the site. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning too now is that um, as the canal itself deteriorates, the, the walls of the canal have become porous, and as the walls of the canal become porous, more of that saline on the high tide, more of the saline water comes in from the estuary and comes into the soil. And we've found that some of the eucalypt species that we've been planting really struggle with those saline and um, boggy conditions in the root zone. So that's why we've had to change the, some of the plants that we've been planting down here. Can you please point out some of the local natives that thrive in this area? Yeah, sure, no worries. Yeah. Um, Right behind me I've got a couple of natives. These plants have been planted here by local volunteers. All the plants in this entire site have been planted by local volunteers. This plant here is called Brainia oblongfolia 
And it's the, one of the things that does really well, Brainy does very, very well on this site. And one of the things that we really like about it is it's self-seeds. So the seeds will develop after it flowers and they drop in the soil and then they tend to germinate. So a lot of the plants that we, we plant, they have difficulty germinating because of the thick mulch and things like that. But Brainier, you will get juvenile Brainiers coming up. And that's what we want. We want that gener regeneration. We want to see these species coming back en masse, you know, to outcompete the weeds and the um, social pressures. Um, cool. This, uh, this other plant here that we've got is called Bursaria spinosa. And Bursaria spinosa is a fantastic plant for small birds. In an urban, highly urbanised environment, it's difficult for small birds to survive. Large birds will be very territorial and push them out. So small birds need thick, complex vegetation that they can hide into and that they can get away and avoid the larger birds. Berseria spinosa provides this because it does have thorns and it's got small, um, lot, very complex foliage. So it gives the small birds somewhere where they can hide. And just bear in mind, this is only a juvenile. This plant will get over, like eight foot tall and it will be quite, you know, maybe three or four times the size. And once you get a clump of these joining up together with your, bird, with your brain ear and other plants, then that creates a little haven for the smaller birds and helps them to survive more in this kind of a landscape. So how does a typical bush cat half day look like? There are fortnightly working bees from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sundays, and they alternate between this site at Richard Murden in Haberfield and another site at Summerhill, which is only about one kilometer away. We usually meet at 9 a.m. and start by weeding. And the common weeds at this site are, I've got them right here, cooch, it's one, then there is asthma weed, this one, asthma wheat, then Bidens, Bidens pilosa, which is this, and Erharta, which is this, everywhere around me. So the weeds with seed heads are, and uh, things with tubers and asthma wheat are taken off-site. The weeds without seed heads are usually dumped on these wheat piles behind me for decomposing. And then around 11 o'clock, we have a morning tea, which is currently bring your own, but normally it's quite relaxed. We, e we even had Christmas mor morning tea and Bushker Santa turning up. And after the morning tea, we are planting, mulching and watering, depending on the season and the site requirements. I'm going to ask you volunteers, what does Bushker mean to them? All right, so now we have Nicole here and I'm, I'm interested. Nicole, can you share with us how long have you been coming to bush care and what does bush care mean to you? Hi, I've been coming to bush care for more than five, six years, I think now. I lived in this area for much longer and saw them all doing bush care and always wanted to do something for the community and actually meeting like-minded people, learning about the environment, uh, learning about the local area and it's great to get in and find out about what is native, what are the weeds, how to look after things, create a corridor so we've seen more wildlife coming back whether it's birds or reptiles or even the brush turkey in certain areas and just feel like you're contributing a little bit to the general environment and cleaning it up and making it healthy for everyone. All right now we have Eliza here and I want to ask you Eliza something. What does bush care mean to you and how long have you been coming? Hello, so I've been coming to bush care for about five years now because I think that it's very important for everyone just to do little things to make a big change. Over the time we've come, we see slow progress, but we've been able to see animals coming back and I think that's really nice and good for the urban environment now. Now we have Penelope here. I want to ask you, Penelope, how long have you been coming to bush care and what does bush care mean to you? I've been coming to bush care for about 21 years. And what it means to me is looking after the environment, being out in nature, watching the plants grow, and it's just great to be out and learning and learning. <laughs> now you're probably familiar with the National Tree Day. And this time last year, there were hundreds of volunteers planting seedlings all around me and at the back. But if it wasn't for Karen, who unfortunately is not here today, None of these seedlings would have made it. And you remember the severe drought we had in summer. She kept coming here almost daily for about two months 
hauling a cart, trolley, with water and watering all of these seedlings, which is quite extraordinary. Look at all of these seedlings around me, everywhere. They're right here and at the back. And there's one misconception and that is the natives are hardy, so we don't need to worry about them. But they're a little bit like people. If we don't give them right environment and care when they're young and fragile, then they're not going to make it or they'll be severely damaged. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. We are sustainablebutterflies.com.au and who are we doing this for? For the environment, future generations, plants, animals, including butterflies. You have a great day.